And the next game is very interesting too. Tennessee, Oklahoma, right? Tennessee, absolutely stomping, dominating all comers. Seven point favorite at Oklahoma. Oklahoma, you know, struggled against Houston as a huge favorite. And the question here is, you know, can Oklahoma hang for four quarters or at some point is Tennessee just going to absolutely run away with it? I can guarantee you there's at least one legit sharp out there who's going to be on Oklahoma, if not a whole bunch of them, just because it's so obvious. When you have a dominating team as a big road favorite against a home dog that's already been struggling on the field, they love these fucking home dogs. Doesn't mean they're always good bets. But there's going to be some sharp action on Oklahoma. Tennessee minus seven. It does feel like at some point Tennessee's going to run away with it and get a double-digit win. But what do you think here, Dabby? So I talked about this game. <clears throat> was it Sunday with Jimmy? Maybe it was Monday. I'm not sure. I talked about this, and I said exactly what you just said, Pete. I said, look, the public is going to hammer Tennessee. The public is going to eat up Tennessee. They're going to love it. And then – here Saturday morning or Friday night, we're going to see quote unquote sharps coming out on Oklahoma. I mean, it's the number 15 team in the country. Norman, Oklahoma is not an easy place to go play. The environment is going to be electric, right? I mean, this is the first big SEC game for Oklahoma, right? It's the first home SEC game for Oklahoma. I'm going to say it again. Norman is going to be rocking. This place is going to be absolutely electric. This is what college football is about. Um, and this isn't, you know, not trying to throw shade at, you know, North Carolina state, but Oklahoma is not them. Okay. And, and NC state was a question mark coming into this season. Um, but I will say this about Tennessee. They're one of my favorites to win it all this year, or at least, you know, be in that, in that playoff picture. Um, you know, people ate up me calling him millionaire Nico in the comments. So I guess I'll do it again. Uh, millionaire Nico, man, obviously this is his first big test road sec, right. But he did show at NC state again, I, I don't think as highly of NC State, but he showed that he can do it there. Um, Samson and Bishop at running back have been great. Thornton, Brazil, McCoy, the, the receivers have been outstanding. Um, I've always been a fan of Josh Heupel. I've just never fully bought in. I don't know what it is. I've always thought, you know, Tennessee's good during the regular season until the last few games, and then they kind of fall apart. It's always what I thought. I think it's different this year. I do. I, I'm buying in. Uh, maybe I'm drinking mm -hmm. the Kool-Aid too much or whatever you want to call it, but I'm buying into this Tennessee team. Um, I think he has his team ready to roll. I think the offense is ready to go, even in this hostile, <clears throat> excuse me, hostile environment that I just talked about. Um, and Tennessee's defense has been stellar too. You know, you got arguably one of the best, if not the best corner rusher going to be getting after Jackson Arnold here. Um, and my questions lie within this Oklahoma team, like, you know, skill set, you know, play scheme, um, all of that, this is going to be the most talented team Tennessee plays, but I still don't know if this team is ready for this type of competition. Okay, that's where I'm going at with Oklahoma. I think this game is going to be electric, but I look at some of these spreads earlier this season, Pete. Okay, I'm going to say Nebraska minus seven and a half, right? And I know they moved. Every spread I'm about to say moved throughout the week, but Nebraska minus seven and a half. You brought it up earlier. Arkansas and uh, Oklahoma State, that game sitting at minus seven and a half. Texas minus seven and a half against Michigan, Tennessee minus seven and a half um, against NC state, right? Alabama opened at minus eight and a half against Wisconsin. All these games, what they have in common is this spread tells me Tennessee might not only win this game, they might win by double digits, like you said. And I think that's what we get here. I'm on Tennessee. I mm -hmm. took a minus 122 for six and a half. I know that some people say, or they say don't buy lines in college football, but all my life I've been trying to figure out who they are, and I still don't know, and I don't care what they say. I have a minus 122 at six and a half, and I love it. So that's what I'm on. All right. Tom Leach says, Tennessee, my favorite bet on Saturday. Kong's Clips, Tennessee wins by at least two touchdowns. Mark my word. Yeah. Noli No says my Pop-Tart was ready. Thank you very much, Noli. You know, hey. I can't I can't disagree with you. I cannot disagree with you. It'll be interesting to see how much sharp action does actually wind up coming in on Oklahoma. Maybe none. Maybe none. We'll see. I'm sure some is already in there. Although, yeah, we have there. I'm sure they're waiting. You know, the line will probably move, get up to nine. Right now it's seven uh, minus one eleven. At some point this is going to be seven and a half market wide, I have to assume. We'll see if it comes back. Right now, the line is minus seven, minus one eleven at uh, at Pinnacle and Dabby Cab. What did you get? You got six and a half minus one twenty two. 
Yep. Very, very nice. Right now, Pinnacle has a six and a half minus 129. You know, based on everything we've seen on the field, it does seem like uh, Oklahoma might be able to hang with Tennessee for a quarter or two Ooh. quarters. Four quarters going to be a little bit tough. And Dabby Cab, like in Tennessee, minus six and a half at about uh, minus 130 or minus 125 or so. Dabby Cab, thanks so much. 